Do you want to learn how to create damage number pop-ups similar to games like World of Warcraft or League of Legends? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how. This tutorial is for Godot 4 and the links to download the GitHub repo are in the description. So the idea is we spawn in a damage number scene. This scene displays a number, moves up, uh, grows, shrinks, fades out, and then deletes itself. And we're doing that very, very quickly. I'm in the damage number scene and you can see we have a, an animation player. And when I play this animation, you'll see the number, which is hard coded the one, two, three, but it changes programmatically. Fade in, grow, and then fade out and shrink. It's not moving. So you'll see the scale X, Y, modulate A of the label container. And we also call a function at the very end called remove. Now you might be wondering, why did I animate a label container and put the label in it? Why wouldn't I just animate the label? If I want to add something to this uh, damage number, such as an icon, a Sprite 2D, because I animated the container instead of just the label, it just works. All of the animations also apply to this Sprite and anything else I put in. If I didn't do that, obviously I would have to reanimate, but I'd have to re keyframe everything. And I'm just very curious what this looks like. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so let me show you how I actually animated the alpha of the label container, as well as the function call at the end of the animation. All right, let's start with the alpha. I'm just going to delete this track. Uh, there's a little garbage can right here to the right of my camera. So let's make sure the label container is selected and then move the playhead all the way to the beginning. We want to animate modulate. Unfortunately, we can't animate individual uh, tracks because really we only want the alpha. So let's just click the key right here to the right of modulate. Let's keep both of these checked and then press create. And you'll see we have four tracks, modulate uh, red, green, blue, and then alpha. We don't care about the color. We just care about the alpha. So press these little garbage cans to get rid of the tracks we don't need. And we're just left with the alpha track, which is exactly what we want to animate. A value of zero uh, makes it invisible and a value of I think it's a hundred or one, excuse me, makes it fully visible. So we actually want to start it invisible. So this keyframe is right in the beginning of the animation. Let's change the value to zero. Now it's invisible. Um, let's click the alpha track and then click the keyframe and do control D and we're going to duplicate the keyframe. Let's move this keyframe towards the beginning. I'm going to stretch out the timeline by holding control and then scrolling up. So I want it to fade in pretty quickly, maybe in like 0.15 seconds. So I'm going to put the keyframe here. Now nothing happens, right? Well, the value is still zero. So we actually want, we want it to go from zero to one. So let's change this value to one. Remember this one's still zero. And now it's going from zero to one. And if we play this, that's what it looks like. So it's fading in very quickly. We want to hold this alpha value of one for a little bit, probably till about here. So same thing, select the track, select the keyframe, control D duplicates it. Now here we don't want to change the value because again, we want the value to stay one. And now from here, from this point, uh, 0.35, I think, we want it to slowly fade out um, to zero. Click this keyframe, which is the, the zero value keyframe. Go all the way to the end. Make sure the track is selected. Make sure the keyframe selected, control D and we have our animation. It fades in quickly, stays faded in, and then fades out slowly. Now, how the heck did I do a function call? Before I show you, let me just go into the script and show you the function. Here's the remove function. All it does is check if this damage number is in the tree, and if it is, it removes it from the tree. So we have that function. How do we call it from the timeline? So first, let's go to where I wanna call it, which is all the way to the right. And now I'm going to add track. I'm going to press the add track button and you see we have call method track. So left click that. We're going to click the node that has the script, which is this one and press okay. There's no keyframe yet. If we right click and press insert key, it will show a list of every single possible function we can add, including void remove. Click. Okay, or open, whatever, and here it is. So now it will call the remove function at the end of this animation. 
I can't really demo that in the scene, but take my word for it. And that's how I animated everything with the animation player. Now the eagle-eyed among you may notice the damage number is not moving. That's because I animated the movement through code using tweens. Now the reason I didn't animate the movement using the animation player is because I just don't know how to animate to a random value. This is the set values and animate function. This function sets the value of this damage number. It sets the start position. It sets how high it will go and it sets the spread range. First, I set the text of the label equal to the value. Next, I play the rise and fade animation, which is the name of the animation we were working on earlier. And now it gets interesting. We make a tween in code by calling gettree.createTween. We calculate the end position of our damage number, and this is a vector two. The X position, which is left and right, it's going to choose a random number between those two numbers. And then the height, the Y value of this end position, how, how high it goes, is the height. It has to be negative because um, negative is up for some reason. And then we add this vector two to the start position. It's adding on our spread and height to the starting location. Next, we want to set the tween length. Our animation length could potentially change. We could just hard code this tween length um, right here but we set it dynamically because if the animation ever changes, uh, the tween will change along with it. And finally, the actual tween. So tween dot tween property, this is what makes it tween. We are changing the position property of our label container. We set the end position here and how long it tweens for here. And we're also setting the start position by chaining on dot from to the end of our tween property. So that's how I'm animating the actual damage number. But how am I spawning them in? Here is our demo scene. The only three things that are really important are the spawn point, the spread slider, and the height slider. This is the 2D demo script. And there are two main functions, the spawn damage number function and the get damage number function. Let's go over the get damage number function first. You call it and then it will return a damage number node. It either creates a new one or gets one from the object pool. Object pools are great for when you're using the same thing over and over and over. Um, instead of destroying that thing and respawning it in, make that thing invisible when you're done with it and then reuse it when you need it again. Why bother doing this? Uh, one, it makes you sound smart. No, I'm kidding. The main reason is to make the game run faster. Spawning things in and destroying them and spawning things in over and over and over, um, that costs more on performance compared to spawning them in once and then just reusing them. We have a damage number 2D pool, and this is an array of damage numbers. Um, keep in mind the damage number script has class name damage number 2D up here. The get damage number uh, function doesn't take any arguments in and it returns a damage number 2D. If the pool has a damage number in it, all we do is return the first damage number um, from the pool. So we use pop front on the damage number pool. Pop front removes and returns the first element of an array. Now, what if there are no damage numbers in the array? Well, we need to make a new one. We do that by instantiating our template. Now up here, we have our template. So on ready var damage number 2D template equals preload. And then this is the damage number 2D scene. This is that. You can just drag it up here and then you get, you get that uh, path. All right, so we have our new damage number. What do we do with it? Uh, basically, we just return it. But before that, we need to connect a function to the damage number's tree exiting signal. And that's what we do here. What function are we connecting? Uh, it's an inline function. And all this function does is append this damage number to the damage number pool. Um, and this, again, this is called, this happens when this damage number exits the tree. Not when it's like destroyed, because remember, we're not destroying it, but just when it's removed from the tree. And remember, uh, the remove function is what does that. We're back in the damage number 2D script. Remove, it stops the animation. And if we're inside the tree, it removes itself from the tree. Finally, we return our brand new damage number. What if you don't want to deal with the object pool? Well, this function becomes a lot simpler. Literally, all you do 
is return this. It is literally just return damage number 2D template dot instantiate. And then in the remove function, you don't even have to stop the animation. All it is is queue free. That's it. What about the spawn damage number function? So you, you pass in the value that you want the damage number to have. And we start with, well, getting our damage number. So da var damage number equals get damage number. And obviously that's the function that gives us our damage number node. We are going to set the value to the value we pass in rounded and then turned into a string. We are going to set the position to the, our spawn point position. Now, obviously you can put this anywhere you want, but in this case, it's where the spawn point is. The height gets set to the text of the height slider and make sure to turn that to a float. And then same for spread. We add the damage number as a child to the demo. And then we just call the set values and animate function on the damage number. The last thing I wanna cover is what's actually calling the spawn damage number function. One is in the input function under if left click is pressed. So if event dot is action pressed, left click. And this is under project, project settings, input map. I created a new action called left click and made it sense my left mouse button. And I did the same for right click. So if left click is pressed, it calls the spawn damage number function. And um, I'm inputting a random float between zero and 10. Yeah, I mean, you can do whatever you want though. I just did zero to a thousand. And if I left click, those are some big numbers. Now, what about the right click? Cause with the right click, you're able to hold it. You're not able to sense whether you're holding it directly, but what you can do is sense whether when you pressed it and when you've released it. So when you've pressed it, I set a variable called right mouse button held equal to true. When you release, I set it equal to false. And in the process function, which, which gets called really, really quickly, if the right mouse button is held, I just call this function. By holding it and not releasing it, it just keeps calling it over and over and over. That's it for this tutorial. I, I really hope this helped, guys. I know I explained a ton. Um, and I mean, my thought process behind that is if you don't know how to do this, you're probably a beginner. I foresee a question being, what about 3D? There's two changes you need to make. One is this needs to be a label 3D instead of a label. The other is that all these vector twos, all these vector twos need to be vector threes. And then for left and right animation, it's X and Z. And then for the height, for the up and down, it's Y. Um, so that'll be some homework if you if you want to try that out. Uh, make this 3D. Again, the link to download this project is in the description. Like and comment for the algorithm and subscribe if you want to see more. I make Godot tutorials and I'm also making a roguelike tower defense in Godot, which is the inspiration for all my tutorials. Anyway, guys, I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one.